Hi friends and welcome back to another episode of our VGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris. I hope you're all well. Looking forward to some VGC today. Um, but we are in C Series 3, not Season 3, Series 3 of the, the Sword and Shield VGC season. And the rules have just updated on the 1st of March. Now I will link the rules doc down in the description below. It'll tell you all of the new GMAX Pokemon that are allowed in the format now that, you're ex that are accessible, as well as all the Pokemon that are now obtainable from Pokemon Home that you're allowed to use in the format. So, like I said, that will be linked down below. You've got things like Incineroar, Venusaur, Blastoise, you've got Primarina, uh, Lolan, Persian. There's a bunch of Pokemon that are now allowed, as well as the new Gigantamax Pokemon like Hatterene, Lapras that we'll be featuring today. Old Beetle, there's so many and it's really exciting to actually get into this new series to actually start playing with these new Pokemon because the team concepts are going to be crazy. There's lots of things to test out but today, like I said, we're going to be concentrating on Gigantamax Lapras. It is now uh, available and in the rules we can use it so we're going to be playing around that. It is going to be the centerpiece of this team. The team concept is made up of Excadrill, Rotom Heat, Togekiss, Whimsicott, Hit on top and the Gigantamax Lapras. So we'll just jump straight into a game and uh, we'll get underway and uh, we'll we'll explain the team as we go along. So um, it's pretty nice. Gigantamax Lapras has a G Max resonance as its G Max move and as its kind of G Max effect. It summons the Aurora Veil to the field for five turns. Now, Aurora Veil, for those of you who are new to VGC or don't know what it is, um, it's basically like a light screen and a reflect all in one move where it cuts the damage of special and physical attacks by half for five turns so it's really really powerful and it's as a side effect for Lapras it's incredibly strong we've went with a weakness policy Lapras in this team paired it up with a primarily going to be pairing it up with a salt vest hit on top so let's see if we can get that going in our first match we've got Fox up first playing a team of Durant, Tyranitar, Togekiss, Incineroar Conkledur and a Whimsicott. So we've got plenty of speed control on my opponent's side of the field. You've got the Whimsicott for that pranks the Tailwind um, and things to kind of counteract uh, the Tailwind if a Trick Room goes up with, with things like Conkledur, Incineroar and Tyranitar there. I'd imagine that the main max Pokemon on this team are going to be your Durant, uh, probably the primary one, then Titar, possibly got the weakness policy there and then Conkledur are going to be a, a third option for my opponent. I'm not really going to worry about what my opponent's going to be doing because I'm just going to lock in and go for our strategy here which is the hit on top Lapras try and get through as many things as possible early on get that G Max Resonance Aurora Veil set up and then kind of have stuff in the back that we can kind of clean up with afterwards um the Conkled like initially I would like to go Rotom Heat and Excadrill but the Conkled makes me feel like I need to bring uh Togekiss so I'm probably going to go Togekiss and Excadrill in the back and we'll lock in uh, the one thing that I found in testing as well, uh, and it's it's a bit weird because I've got the, the Whimsicott on our side of the field as well, uh, but I very rarely bring Whimsicott to the to the battles, and uh, it's definitely a slot I feel that could be changed for something else that gives us a little. I do feel like we struggle a little bit against Conqueror and Tyranitar, particularly like um, weakness policy Tyranitar, but. Uh, maybe that's a slot where the Whimsicott could be changed for something else. That's just initially testing. But as always, we'll do the two battles today. Uh, we'll do another episode later in the week. And I will share the rental team with you in that later episode this week. So do keep an eye out for that so you can test this team out yourself and have a go with G-Max Lapras. Um, yeah, I think we need to get rid of the Durant. Uh, we'll try and stop. I mean, do we, do we, do we, do we, do we just Mach Punch ourselves or do we stop the Tailwind? Because we can stop at this turn, but we can't stop at the next turn unless we double into the Whimsicott. There is a chance that the Whimsicott could potentially have Protect as well, because more Whimsicotts are carrying Protect. So, um, kind of tempted to go Mach Punch into, just for the fact that I want to get more damage onto the Durant. But the thing is... I feel like Max Resonance is probably enough to get the Durant. It's so weak. Yeah, so the Wemmy is just switching out. We would have been better better off going for the Mach Punch, I think. Or at least Mach Punch into maybe the Durant just to get some damage off onto it. But you can say. He's just making those decisions and trying to get them right. Durant in the heavy ball there. 
Nice ball. All about the, the, the special balls these Pokemon are in. And definitely one of those trainers. Is it shiny Dorite as well? I'm pretty sure it is. Was it shiny? I didn't really pay too much attention. Anyway, we do see the Durant um, go for its um, Dynamax. Uh, the Incineroar switching and just getting Intimidate off onto our side of the field. Not really going to affect our Lapras primarily, special attacker. I'm going to be kicking myself a little bit if we do miss out on the, the Durant here, which we may do, you know. Uh, it's not going to be ideal. But we'll see how this turn plays out. Uh, because the Mac Punch would have definitely probably guaranteed uh, the KO into the Durant and it would have been maybe the better option to go with here. Uh, it is going to be minus one so Lapras taking that a little bit a little bit more comfortably and the, the next turn the big thing is that we're going to be able to have our Aurora Veil up so it does mean that we will be able to take um, another one but actually as it turns out the Rockfall going to proc our weakness policy anyway so we don't really get punished too badly for not going for that Mac Punch turn one and this should, like I say, pick up. Wow, it doesn't. Wow. Wow. Hmm. I would have thought that would have gone it, but it seems like it doesn't. Hmm. Okay. Well, I think we can definitely guarantee the Durant the next turn, for sure. It's whether or not we want to go for the, the Incineroar or not. Or if we want to go for the Max. It might be worth, like... What's my opponent got? Because they got the Tyranitar. I don't know if it's worth going for a, a geyser just yet. Because they can overwrite the weather if they got the Tyranitar in the back pretty easily. Um, the only thing it could do is weaken potentially a Flare Blitz from the Incineroar if it, they do decide to go down that route. Um, what are they going to go for? Steel Spike? Probably, if anything. I don't think they're going to go for a Rock. Ball. So we could have switched Togekiss in there, but it's risky because the Steel Spike could come out uh, from my opponent. The only other thing is it's likely that they may go um, Max Quick into into top because of the defense special defense boost if they don't attack into the Lapras. But they are going to go for the Max Knuckle. We do take that pretty comfortably though. Uh, Excadrill sticks around and we can... Live another day. Um, we do see the fake up from the Incineroar as well, so there's no risk of it going for a uh, Flare Blitz here. We are going to be able to get rid of the Durant now, though, which is nice. Um, kind of sets us up nicely for the next turn as well, especially if the Tito's not in the back. We potentially have uh, a Max Vortex or the Max Vortex move into the, the Incineroar to take that down the next turn, especially with our weakness policy up. But the nice thing as well is getting the him on top out, we do have the potential to switch it back in this next turn. Um, Whimsicott coming in. Got to imagine that they're going to go Tailwind. I'm going to go for the Max Geyser into Incineroar and... Hmm, can I just Iron Head the Whimsicott? I think I'm just going to... Yeah, Iron Head the Whimmy just to get some damage off onto it, really. There's the Tailwind. What we're gonna see the Incineroar go for here. I don't think anything takes down the Lapras from the Incineroar. Flare Blitz. I think we take this with Excadrill even. Yeah. This is the Rain and the Aurora Veil, of course. Gotta remember that. <laughs> the Aurora Veil up as well. Uh, so we do get the Wimmy down to its Sash, um, and the Max Geyser should take down the Incineroar. Excadrill's not in the best place right now, so it's probably worth us switching it out the next turn because the Wimmy's going to be... It's got the Tailwind up. It's going to be in a position where it is going to be able to just pick off the Excadrill. So it might be worth bringing in him on top the next turn, depending on what my opponent's last Pokemon is. It's going to be that Tyranitar. Um, but one of the things we can potentially do is go for... A perish song with our lacquers because it's our last turn of our G Max, so we'll revert now. Um, and with an intimidate with the Aurora Veil up, you gotta hope. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna be able to get the perish up, but we'll try. We'll try. Uh, I am gonna, regardless, switch Excadrill out for him on top. I think the one thing that we're gonna want to kind of hope for is that the Whimsicott doesn't just have Moonblast, which it probably does, and that's gonna be its 
its option to go into the Excadrill. So him on top, not really going to enjoy that, but it's not going to go down to it because we do have the Assault Vest there on the hit on top. Um, because one of the options that I've got on the hit on top for this team, uh, just to get around to pausing. Um, oh, we're going to see. Okay. Ah, unfortunately, we don't get the... Um, we do see Energy Ball come out. Uh, it was Brick Break to get around opposing uh, Aurora Veil set up from um, opposing G Max Lapras. Uh, so that was one of the reasons. Like I ended up with four attacking moves on and hit on top, and to get the the Brick Break off um, consistently, I felt like it, it made more sense. Um, To have a little bit more staying power on the field. So the Assault Vest made a lot more sense in that situation. Uh, we've got Iron Head and we've got Fake Out. We might end up rocking a weakness policy here. I wouldn't be surprised if we, we did, but I don't think we're in any danger of um, of going down, to be honest. I will just swap out Excadrill here and just go for a close combat. I don't think we're going to see. I mean, I could just protect Excadrill. be an option because we've got one more, one more turn Tailwind, right? As our Aurora Veil wearing off, we're going to proc the weakness policy anyway after the Tyranitar's attack, so it's, it's, it's fine. I think you want to prioritize, pro it's hard. I think you probably do go Rock Slide for the flinch chance here. Yeah, you want to flinch both targets if you can. Gives you a little bit more hope, because then if you get rid of the extra drill, if you don't have Protect, it makes sense. Then you can, uh, you can probably have a chance at closing the game out, although I'll hit him on top. <laughs> <laughs> with Brick Break and Mac Punch, doesn't really care what the, the Tyranitar's doing. It's a bit of a sacrifice not playing close combat, but I think the, the support that Brick Break gives you, it's not only good against Lapras, it's also good against Grim Snarls and things like that that try to set up dual screens. And, you know, Meow Stick is a new Pokemon that's on the scene as well that learns Light Screen Reflect that can, can play that. So it works quite nicely. Um, and there we go. So we do clean that one up and uh, pick up a win. Pity we didn't get the Perish Song off with the Lapras. That would have really just put the icing on the cake. But good game to Fox. And uh, we'll move on to our next game. And hopefully it doesn't take too long to find our next opponent. But um, one thing I would love to hear from you guys though. Uh, going into Series 3 is how you've been finding uh, the new Pokemon, what ones you've been playing around with the most going into the new format um, and what techs and things are you looking forward to trying out um, and what do you expect to be really good going forward. We've got Francesco up next, uh, it looks like he's playing Mr. Wolfie's team. Um, so this is a team that we've got uh, number one rank at the very end of season two. So when season two is at its, its hardest, he put this team together and got rank number one right before the uh, the season finished. So massive props there. Really interesting team as well. If you haven't checked it out, do go and check out his channel. He's got some amazing VG content. Uh, you've got the Togekiss, the G-Max Charizard, um, Tokol, the Rhyperia, Dusclops, and then the Leafeon, which has got Chlorophyll as well. So it's going to be tricky, 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 tricky. Uh, we'll go with our Lapras, and I hit him on top again. I feel comfortable with those two. Uh, the Dusclops Rhyperia mod is going to be pff, very difficult for us to deal with, but it's not going to be impossible. Um, hmm. Rotom Heat is very good here, I feel. Uh, I don't know what we've got for Rotom Heat, actually. Must have some, well, apart from the Rhyperia, of course. <laughs> Got the right period. That's probably one of the better answers out there. Uh, and we'll go with Excadrill, I guess. Do we want Excadrill? I mean, the Sash gives us a little bit more security here. And I don't really see what... I mean, Togekiss does help us out for Follow Me. But a lot of the opponent's attacks are kind of double attacks anyway. So the only thing it's really helping out with more than anything is probably the Leafeon. Which I'm not massively concerned about. Um, but it's not gonna. This isn't, this isn't gonna be the easiest game in the world. I think the Togekiss might have been nice for the situation when we get the, the Lapras set up and we we got the Togekiss to bring in for the Follow Me support just to give the Lapras a little bit of a cushion going going forward. But we do see the Togekiss come in and the uh, Dust Clops as well. Um, I mean, here we could just go. Fake out into the kiss. 
and G Max Resonance. Or we could go Mach Punch. Mach Punch and G Max Resonance. I feel like that might be the play. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it. I just wanna get rid of the Togekiss to be honest. Uh, and get our Aurora Veil up. So that's what we will do. What's the Dusclops gonna do? Probably go for a Trick Room, I would imagine. But what we want to try and maneuver ourselves into a position to do is probably get the, the hit on top out so we can get it back in and intimidate the right period. Because if we can get our weakness points dropped and we'll be hitting after the right period and trick with them. Depends if the, the Dusclops has got Bulldoze. Obviously then self proxy to bury. So that's why getting the him on top out to get back in to get the Intimidate. So Rhyperia is only on plus one. Gives Lapras a wit. Oh no! No! <laughs> this is the worst, the worst thing that could happen. The Yawn. I always forget about, literally always forget about Yawn. <sighs> okay, well, we've got one turn left with Lapras. What can we do? Can we make it count? I don't know if we can. That's why the fake out would have been better. Fake out, do that. Next turn. We'd outspeed the uh, Togekiss, so we just get rid of it. Ah, oh, the fake out would have been the better play there. We've got greedy. 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 Hmm. Okay. Well, I still think we'll take whatever attack from Rhyperia. If it comes in. Yeah. I do. I think if it maxes, we see the bulldoze, we'll be fine. And I think my best bet to get something in, so I'm going to take massive damage, is going to be the Rotom. And then we got the switch back into top the next turn. But if my opponent's smart about it, they'd probably just protect Rhyperia here. Maybe. Problem is protecting here, you're still gonna take a big old chunk of damage. Um, even though you get your weakness policy activated. Because we are plus two, that's the only thing. Unless the Dusclops has Haze, and that could be a nice tech. You Haze, protect, you don't take that much damage from the, the Max, the Hydro, or whatever it is. Or you do that. Or you do that. That's definitely one way to get around it. Oh, we avoid! <laughs> Double avoid. Oh my god. And we get this up into the Dust Clops. Nice damage. It's not going to KO though. Nice damage. But we are going to be asleep now. Lapras is taking a good old nap. Hmm. Okay. Well. Now the right period definitely maxes. Um, I think he chased down the Rotom to be honest. We could potentially go... Ally switch, just give ourselves a little bit of a chance. He chased on the rock. Mm, do you chase on the rock? I might think you probably do, so there's probably not much point. It's probably better off getting the hit on top in just to get the intimidate. And then maybe switching out into Excadrill the next turn so we can get him on top back in the next turn. After that, to kind of nullify the intimidate. It's a lot of turns in switching around, but we've got to try and do something. We know that Lapras has got a guaranteed turn of sleep here. The other option that we could have had turn one was maybe going. Uh, it depends if we want our Aurora Veil up. But the best option for us, obviously, in hindsight, would have been the Fake Out and then the G Max Resonance. But um, we could have went Max Lightning as well because that would have prevented the Yawn from actually being able to take effect. There's the Bulldoze. Okay, what are we going to see? There's a weakness policy. Mm -hmm. We just need Lapras to stick around as long as possible. Please, Lapras, stick around. Okay, there's Max Rock Ball. How much is this doing? It's into top. That's way better. Okay, they are chasing. They are chasing the hit on top. Okay. Right, well, what are we going to need? Like, let's weigh up our. Uh, like what we need, what we're gonna need late game. Um, hmm. 
problem is now we're not G Max, so we've not got as much defense on our side. But we could wake up this next turn. Get a high pump off. But we need to make sure that we are targeting the right slot here. Um, hmm. Do you think that the Dusclops attacks? Because we could potentially sucker punch the Dusclops. I don't really want to do that. I'd rather. I think, let's see my, what my opponent's got. Right. Potentially have. Oh, the Rotom's probably going to be the better Pokemon. So I think, because we've got the Sash on Excadrill. We'll go for that. I'd imagine here anyway that my opponent probably goes Max Rockfall into the Lapras. I think our only hope is here that we wake up. Uh, we survive this and we wake up. And we get the Hydro Pump off. And we are able to get rid of... Wow. Yeah, there's no... Wow. Wow, wow, wow. <sighs> okay, well, there's the Nightshade that breaks our Sash, which is not ideal. Uh, we've got one more turn of Dynamax left. Mm. We could bring Water in and go for the Ally Switch. We haven't revealed that yet. And we could, but well, we can't Earthquake. That's the only problem. Which we want to be doing. Um, we could bring in Rotom and then switch to top and just protect Excadrill. Just we're not going to be able. Mm, maybe we'll get if if Top can come in here and take an attack. Then we've got Fake Out into Rhyperia the next turn. We can just get rid of the Dust Cops to get rid of the Trick Room element from my opponent, and then we'll take it from there. It's not not easy, but it's not over just yet. Ah. Uh, I wish I just faked out the Togekiss turn 1. I think this would have been a lot easier if we'd just done that. We got Finnessy, that's quick, into the Excadrill. Still a lot of damage, still a lot of damage. Okay, right, well. And um, Nightshade. Yeah, we've just got enough, just about enough health to take that. The Dusclop's going to go down regardless this next turn. Um, one of the things you could potentially do is just Earthquake. The only pro trouble is I feel like the Rhyperior probably protects. That's the, that's my only that's my only worry. Um, I think we've got Iron Head uh, Dusclops. If we can get a double attack off into the right period, that would help. Um, doesn't protect. Oh. Oh. Ah, we get a free Iron Head in, so we're getting free damage off. So this is like we doubled the right period anyway. So that pretty much wins us the game, I think. Um, because now we Mach Punch and Earthquake. Well, it depends what my opponent's got as their last Pokemon. Of course, this, 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 this is big. If it's Tokol, then I don't think the Rhyperia has Protect either. Oh, <laughs> it's Charizard! No. Uh, all right. Well, we're gonna see a Heat Wave regardless of what happens here. Um. And I don't think we've got quite enough to, um, mm. could a Mac Punch, I don't think a Mac Punch gets the right period, but a Brick Break may, we're probably better off going Mac Punch and going Protect, let's try that, I don't want Excadrill to go down just yet, we're going to be gutted if the Charizard Protects thinking that we're Sand Rush, and we're not, okay, Oh, we get that. There's a heat wave. Yeah. It kind of comes down to Rotom here, really. Yeah, it's the hit on top. If we only had Wide Guard, Wide Guard would have been incredible. Incredible. As the earthquake. Okay, alright. 
I hate wave, heat wave can miss. Heat wave can miss. So the sandstorm does subside. That helps our raw team out a bunch. Um, because it does mean that we can potentially overheat the Rhyperia. And then we've got nasty plot. So we can nasty plot. Uh, we just need the overheat to actually get the Rhyperia. And then we can nasty plot and potentially take down the Charizard. Uh, I'll go for a rock slide just in case heat wave misses. It's not the most accurate move in the world. It does hit, unfortunately. Excavate is going to go down. It's all about taking this Rhyperia down, though. That's a big thing. Come on, Rotom. Let's do this. And we hit. Is it enough? Oh, it's just enough. Okay. Well, we've got... <sighs> we probably need to... Nasty plots. I don't know if we've got room for it. We have got a Citrus Berry that will proc. Um, maybe, maybe. Let's see. Well, nasty plot anyway. We can still win this. We just need a heat wave miss. That's what we need. Heat wave miss. We might be able to get two nasty plots. Actually, I think we can. Because I think that affords us. This probably affords us. Hmm. Or do we just go? Nah, I don't think we risk it. I think just two thunderbolts will be enough. We don't need to risk it. We don't need to risk another nasty plot just to get the one shot. Not worth it. Let's just go. Two Thunderbolts, and that should be game. And this has been a slog, but we've managed to maybe, maybe. It's not over yet. It's not over. I don't know if we're going to take the next one, you know. I really don't. Can this take down the Charizard? Oh. <laughs> it's going to be so close. It's really going to be so close. So I think it comes down to the damage roll. Maybe not even that, though. I think the Heat Wave probably takes us down. Ha. <sighs> Hasn't missed once, either. Nah. Okay. Well, very good game to my opponent. Uh, I think we did well to kind of get as far as we did after making a few errors in that match that we definitely highlighted as we went through. Um, it came down probably as close as it could have got. Um, yeah, and even then we couldn't have afforded ourselves an extra nasty plot, could we? Because it would have been the same situation. We had to go for the Thunderbolt. So I think the end game, we made the... the, the uh, the right decisions um so yeah but big props to my opponent showing off that team anyway hope you've enjoyed today's episode my friends uh, a couple of really good games we'll be back later in the week like i said earlier on in the episode to feature this team once again with the gmax lapras it's a lot of fun and in that episode i will have the rental team for you all so do keep an eye out for that one make sure you do subscribe to the channel so you know when that goes up uh, do hit the bell button so you get the notification when we go up with the video do hit the like button as well uh, it really does help the video it lets me know that you enjoy this content more than anything else and uh, just um, stick around for updates on the new gmax pokemon coming into rotation potentially on the 8th or 9th of march um, and i'll be doing um, some stuff on that and plenty of other content in the meantime so have a great rest of your day thanks for tuning in i'll see you all for the next one so until then take care today